Apple Inc. ticker symbol AAPL is currently trading at $228 a share. Year to date, it is up almost 22.83% beating out the likes of Amazon, Microsoft, and uh, especially Tesla. Not so much NVIDIA though. But what we're going to be doing today is looking at my automated stock valuation spreadsheet to see if Apple is a buy or a sell using the discounted free cash flow model, the comparable company model, the dividend discount model, and of course the Ben Graham formula for intrinsic value. So as I said at the start, the stock is currently trading at $228, has had a pretty good year to date, up 22%. Uh, if we were to compare to the S&P 500 in this similar time, I have no surprises that Apple will be winning. Yes, 22% compared to 18% 18 year to day. If we go from the last year, uh, pretty neck and neck, surprisingly. Uh, S&P 500 has uh, just very uh, gradually beat out Apple 26.9% compared to 26.55%. But over the last five years, not very close at all, up almost 336% compared to the S&P's 92. So let's go have a look at my automated stock valuation spreadsheet. If we type in the ticker Apple, what this will do is it will load all the latest company financial data. If you're interested, please pay, check out my Patreon. Um, but let's have a look. So currently price of $228, market cap $3.4 trillion. P.E. ratio of 34, which is slightly higher than the market average of 29. So that's a pretty good sign already. <clears throat> Earnings per share, $6.57. A beta of 1.24, meaning it is slightly more volatile in the market. And analysts do think it is a buy, $235, yeah, $235 a share for the target price. A dividend yield of 0.44%, which gives you about $1 per share. Uh, it is a very safe dividend, only about 15% on the payout ratios as they pay $15.3 billion in the dividend. So let's have a look at the revenue. Uh, revenue down from its all-time highs. Trailing 12 months has been 2023 with $384 billion, but down from its all-time highs of 2022 of 391 You can see we had a big jump up here in 2021, and they did beat those numbers again, but has kind of dropped back down reality. But you can see how Apple, if we have a look at here, they do have these big jumps, dropped back down, and then jumps up again. So I think this is within sort of reason from what we've seen here back to 2009. And next, we're having a look at the net income, and they are able to generate even more profit despite the small decrease in net income, $102 billion in the last trailing 12 months. Uh, so that is excellent to see its all-time highs. Free cash flow, and uh, not a similar story. It is down slightly, $104 billion, down from the 2022 number of 111 but once again, steady growth, uh, consistently on the up, which is what we like to see. Uh, assets versus liabilities. Liabilities are higher than the assets, but you can see it's been pretty consistent here, 290 to 114. Uh, if we have a look at the discounted free cash flow model, this is a way of calculating the stock price, uh, looking at its expected future cap free cash flows, discounting them to today's value. We will look at the trailing 12 months, and if we base on these averages, it is currently trading uh, way above what it's expecting, $104 a share. So let's have a look at these numbers here. You can see revenue growth rate is probably a bit on the low side. We're expecting 408 and 433. Let's see what analysts are saying in a similar time. Yeah, we're probably on the bullish side as well. Uh, 104, uh, sorry, 401. Um, so yeah, I think we'll keep these at about the same. Net income margins, net income margins are around about 26%. So we'll just raise this up to 26. That puts it at still about $108 stock. And free cash flow to net income. We'll go bullish here, we'll say 100%. Still $121 stock. So this counter free cash flow, very interestingly, does not say this stock is a buy. Uh, we'll quickly look at the dividend discount model. I don't think this will really like it because of the low numbers here. Um, the growth is all over the place here. So let's look at around about 7%. Uh, 
yeah it doesn't really like it it's saying it's 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 way undervalued at about 60 dollars a share and um, this is because the the dividend has changed with stock splits and things like that so we will not be looking too much on that and uh, the one i like to look at the most is of course the comparable companies model this is a way of uh, valuing stocks looking at competitors in a similar size or similar industry and looking at these uh ratio is here to see if it's a buyer or sell the things that i'm interested in growth rate profit margin price to sales price to book peg which is peter lynch's formula price to earnings growth uh, ev to revenue ev to ebitda earnings before interest taxes depreciation amortization and pe and then this gives us the implied value based on these so we'll just go with the classics here microsoft number one we already have google as number three and so we will probably you know let's just go with meta meta is a very similar uh similar size so if we see here actually we'll probably let's let's go with amazon uh so apple is the largest with a value of 3.4 billion microsoft three amazon around about two and google about two as well revenue uh second highest only behind Amazon, which is interesting due to the fact that obviously Amazon has a lot of revenue from their e-commerce, which is we'll see why their profit margins are a bit lower. Uh, growth rate is the slowest out of the four, which is quite interesting to see. EBITDA highest, uh, 131 billion compared to Microsoft's 129, 115 for Alphabet and then 104 for Amazon. Net income, most profitable company here, 102 billion. Uh, profit margins though, pretty much the same as Google, but a lot less than Microsoft, which is quite interesting. Price to sales, the uh, middle of the pack, nine uh, compared to Microsoft's 12 and Alphabet six. Price to book, highest by four. Uh, so we'll, we won't be looking at that. Peg, very close to Microsoft and Amazon. Google is a lot lower with 1.2. Uh, check out my previous video if you're interested in uh, Google. EV to revenue, middle of the pack again. EV to EBITDA on the high side and PE ratio. Uh, bang in the middle again so if we look at all of these value valuations you can see it actually uh, puts it slightly overvalued at around about 190 dollars a share let me just quickly switch around google and amazon and we'll just look at the secondary sheet here hopefully it does load uh, if we just look at Microsoft and Google, which are the more direct competitors, brings it up to around about $202 a share, but still slightly overvalued, which is interesting. Uh, if we were to compare to, uh, we want to go with Amazon, Google, and uh, Microsoft. God, I forgot the last one there. And we'll look over the last five years. You can see Apple is handily beating all those three um, with 300% compared to their 180 and 200. But if we go over the last year, you can see it is pretty neck and neck. Um, even if we compare it against the, uh, I don't know why I've done it this way. I was going to say compare it to the Fang, which is obviously Meta, uh, Amazon, Google, Google. We'll do the class C and netflix i'm sure some people would want this fang in order because this currently spells am gen oh that's gn am gn um so you can see here if we go over the last five years still the leader in all of these five but in the year to date pretty neck and neck with meta wow up almost 78 percent in the last year and netflix as well very crazy Finally, the Ben Graham formula for intrinsic value. Uh, this is a way of, this is uh, the final adjust the Ben Graham formula for intrinsic value, which looks at earnings per share, the PE of the growth company, uh, times the corporate bond yield and the AAA bond yield. Bond yield is very high at 5.2%. And unless analysts are expecting crazy growth from Apple, I think this is gonna be a not buy. Ooh, only 11%. In the next five years so we'll, we'll look at that there and puts it at around about 110 dollars a share so they're expecting about a half uh, apple's price to be halved which is interestingly very close to the uh discounted free cash flow model but i don't think that would be the case i don't see the stock halving if it does half buy as much as you humanly can of it um but to see for this to be a buy or fairly valued even that you can see it has to be at around about 30% over the next five years. So it doesn't seem to like the stock really, but 
once again, why are looking at the comparable company model? This does give it a more fairly valued at $192 a share. Right, guys, thanks for watching. Please check out the video. Check out my Patreon. Uh, you've already checked out the video. Check out my Patreon if you're interested in the sheet. And uh, subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys next time.